good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Um, thank you. Um, so as I mentioned, title for my talk, as above. I have no disclosures this, mor this afternoon, thank you. So I just wanted to share with you briefly the motivations for this study were first, cholecystectomy as an operation is the fourth most common eye ambulatory surgery performed in the United States at present. And in fact, it's the most common general surgical operation performed. If we look at the AHRQ data from 2012 in terms of US population incidence, we see that there's a rate of 37.3 cholecystectomies performed per 100,000 um, persons in the United States at present, and 55% of that is performed in an outpatient ambulatory context. And the majority of these are performed from a laparoscopic approach greater than 80%. So New York State specifically in this similar time period, there were 36,300 and change cases, about 94% of which were performed laparoscopically and 45% in an outpatient setting. So the purpose of this study was really to determine what the changes in uh, cholecystectomy was in New York State and to identify trends particularly in the volume, setting, and indications for the procedure over this course of time. In terms of the methodology, what we utilized was the New York State Planning and Research Committee cooperative system, uh, which is a administrative database that has patient level data with unique identifiers that allow, lo allow longitudinal follow-up of patients. So all inpatient and outpatient discharges in the state are captured within this database. We're able to use ICD-9 and CPP codes in order to extract data for further analysis. During the time course of the study, which was 1995 through 2013, we were able to identify 711,406 patients for this study. Inclusion criteria included an age greater than 18 years, both open and laparoscopic cholecystectomies as procedures, complete encounter records, and items that were exclusionary were records that were duplicate or had internal uh, discordant content and indications for operation that were for malignancy. So we ex um, uh, restricted this to benign disease. Demographic data was also identified as well as operative data in terms of data, the operation, the approach, indications, and what the setting was. The statistical analysis consisted of examining linear trends using uh, log linear Poisson regression models, correcting for dispersion rates we expressed per 1,000, as you'll see in some of the graphics to, be, to follow. And uh, we set significance levels at P less than 0.05 and did analysis using SAS software. In terms of volume trends, what we were able to identify, those are the first of the three um, areas where we were focusing. Um, we were able to identify that the majority of cases were performed laparoscopically in the state during this time frame, greater than 90%. And aside from a period of time in the mid-90s to early to mid-2000s where there was a transient increase in volumes, what we saw was relative to the baseline data in 1995, by 2013 there was a minimal increase in operative volume per cholecystectomy um, in total and that correlated to a 1.2% increase over this 19-year span. And when we put that in the context of population growth for the state, which is actually 7.4%, we recognize that this actually is um, not correlated with population growth and that there's some other factors underlying this. Um, and you can start to appreciate from this that there's a, a decreasing proportion of the annual um, rate which is composed of from open surgery as time goes on as one might expect. In terms of the, pardon me, in terms of the distribution in terms of operative setting and context from an inpatient and outpatient setting, what we see is that those trends too change over time and at the beginning of the study period in 1995 all of the laparoscopic operation was done in an inpatient context which comprised 78 percent of cholecystectomies in the state at that time. However, you fast forward a year and you start to see that there's now a appreciable amount of outpatient laparoscopic cholecystectomy that's starting to be done, and that proportion continues to increase throughout time. Whereas towards the end of the study period, there's 94% of the operations performed in New York State were a laparoscopic approach, and of those, 49% were performed in an outpatient setting. 
And finally, the third part that we were investigating was what's been going on with the indications for cholecystectomy? Have those been constant or really has that evolved as well as our approach and our setting has similarly changed? And does one drive the other is obviously the question that would ensue. So calculus cholecystitis, acute and chronic, biliary dyskinesia, gallstone pancreatitis, acalculus cholecystitis, and biliary dyskinesia were the benign pathologies examined. And this is in tabular format with the annual rates. I'll give you um, a graphic in just a moment to express this further. But when you look at the change from 95 to 2013 and express that as a percent, that's the relative change that's indicated here. And what we see is there's a significant decline in rates for calculus cholecystitis, a 20% decline, and dramatic 330-fold change in biliary dyskinesia. And gallstone pancreatitis, 107-fold, acalculus cholecystitis, 94, and biliary dyskinesia, 55-fold. Graphically, this is expressed in a log fashion on the y-axis, you see up above, in the dark blue, the calculus cholecystitis, as I'd mentioned before, showing downtrending incidence, 20% decline over this period. And on the far bottom, in the red, is the biliary dyskinesia, which demonstrated a 330-fold rise over the similar time frame, which is rather remarkable in that context. So in conclusion, what we aimed to see was a better understanding of what's been going on and what our practice patterns are in the state. And what we've seen is laparoscopic cholecystectomy has had a um, relatively rapid migration to the outpatient arena. There's been a coincident decline in the rate of calculus disease for cholecystitis, where concomitant increases in incidence for all other diagnoses. The reasons for that shift is not 100% clear based on the data set that we have, which obviously is limited from a retrospective database analysis. And potential changes that we identified that might be attributable are intrinsic changes in disease distribution, patient factors in terms of operative timing and choice, and evolving practice patterns both from the diagnosis and management standpoint, increased use of ancillary diagnostic modalities, perhaps increased utilization of HIDA scan and the diagnostic algorithms for cholecystitis, which way it might exclude that diagnosis may then point you forward to something else such as biliary dyskinesia. So, um, still other avenues for further investigation regarding this. Thank you very much. Thank you.